protect your name, protect your likeness, protect your sort of copyrights, everything about your practice, curate the people around you. I say that mainly because I just got finished watching the Bob Ross documentary on Netflix. Yes, there's a Bob Ross documentary on Netflix, so go there, yay. It was only an hour and 10 minutes. They didn't get over sort of everything about Bob Ross. It was mainly about his come up and then the partnership that he uh, sort of had with this couple that really sort of took him down sort of like the path of losing his name and his family losing the rights to his name and the Bob Ross sort of likeness and stuff like that. But it was a great sort of watch when it came to sort of being a reminder for artists and creatives to protect their rights, to protect their name, protect their practice, their artwork. You know, how do we want our artwork to be used, you know, after we're gone? So that was sort of what the documentary was about. There's some spicy stuff though. There was some tea being spilled, like an affair. Woo! But, you know, the like I said, the documentary was great mainly because it sort of was a great reminder for artists. So Bob Ross was an instructor, a painting instructor that sort of traveled and sort of taught people how to paint doing demos and things like that. And he sort of ran into this couple, uh, Annette and Walt Kowalski, and basically he partnered up with them. And that's sort of where he got his start in terms of, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. At the end of the day, um, the couple actually ran a lot of the business side of it. They were in it for the money, they were in it for the products and sort of just selling things. And that in it for what Bob Ross wanted to do was just to share art and let people know that they can be artists and creatives and express themselves. So the couple actually own the Bob Ross sort of brand, the company. All the sort of cups, the mugs, the Chia Pet, all that stuff that you see online and in stores, isn't that sort of helping any of the Bob Ross family. So his son doesn't see any of that, the brother doesn't see any of that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. You telling me Bob Ross family ain't getting none of that bread? Yeah, his family doesn't own the company. Oh, hell no. You know how much money I spent on Bob Ross paintbrushes and canvases right now? <laughs> Mother Yes, it is actually someone else who runs the Bob Ross Inc. company. So that is something that I did not know. So now it's like, I'm not going to go out and support that brand because I know it's not really helping out the family at all. It wasn't what Bob Ross wanted. And in the documentary, you sort of see that. The great reminder is this documentary of how important it is to sort of plan ahead, make sure you're sort of reading the contracts, you're not signing away anything. You sort of have contingency plans and plans in place to where you sort of tell people what your intentions are for your work or your name or likeness, things like that. And I think this is really important, especially today, because a lot of the work that we do is also in the public eye. It's a lot more co sort of commercial around the art world. So when we're sort of getting into how's our work being used, you know, when we're gone or even while we're alive, you know, sometimes you have to make sure that you read those contracts, that you're not signing things away, that you're not sort of signing your likeness away or you know things like that or even you know when you pass away how is your work being used you know who owns your work who sort of controls wh what happens to your work and your likeness things like that and i recently saw the tiffany commercial that uh, jay-z and beyonce were in where they had the basquiat painting on the side for uh, Tiffany's. And for me, it's like, I didn't really care anything other than did Basquiat's estate, family, you know, did they see any proceeds from, you know, having his work in a commercial, mainly because it's no different than having, you know, like a Ray Charles or, you know, a Michael Jackson sort of uh, music in a commercial for a big brand. You know, they're gonna pay for that music. You know, you need to pay for the artwork that is displayed on that sort of commercial. So even when you're gone, your work sh still should be respected enough to be, you know, earning something for your family. So, you know, that's something that I sort of now start to think about a little bit more and more and more, you know, like I said, as a lot of the work, you know, is sort of filtered into the public domain. So in the end, the documentary really was a great reminder of, you know, this whole area of protecting your rights, protecting your copyrights, protecting your likeness, protecting your name, protecting, you know, the work and actually planning ahead and figuring out what you want to happen to your work. How do you want your work to be used? 
if something were to happen to you because eventually we all die so we got to make sure you know we put those plans into place so that is something like i said i really wanted to talk about today because i just saw that documentary it's on netflix it's only an hour and 10 minutes so it's a great watch and i th think everyone should sort of watch it because we all have had some experience at least watching or experiencing bob ross in some form or fashion on tv i know i have a lot of those experiences just watching him so it was a great just to see the behind the scenes and what happened so like i said hopefully um, you watch that video and you start to plan ahead and make sure you dot your i's and cross your t's whenever you're doing contracts or partnering with people and making sure that you curate the people in your you know around you and in your practice and you're doing business with the right people that want you to succeed and that just don't want to make a dime off of you and that's it so hopefully this video helped you out and i will see you next time peace